Hello and welcome to this lesson on induced magnetism, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson on induced magnetism, we're going to try and understand the principle of induced magnetism. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what induced magnetism is, understand the difference between induced magnetism and permanent magnetism, and then investigate the properties of induced magnetism. So this links into the following part of the AQA Combined Science GCSE uh, links into this with 6.7.1.1 poles of a magnet. In particular this idea of the difference between permanent and induced magnets. So there are two types of magnet permanent magnets and induced magnets. Now permanent magnets are magnets which produce their own magnetic field. Now a magnetic material can also become a magnet when it's placed into a magnetic field. Now this type of magnet is not called a permanent magnet, rather it's called an induced magnet. So this type of magnetism is called induced magnetism. Now it's important to note that when removed from a magnetic field, an induced magnet will lose most or all of its magnetism. Now another important idea regarding induced magnetism is that the force between an induced magnet and a permanent magnet is always attractive. So it doesn't matter which pole of a permanent magnet is facing an induced magnet, you will always get an attractive force between the two. So an example of this is a permanent magnet picking up a paper clip or a nail. So it's important to note that a magnetic material will become a magnet when it's placed inside a magnetic field. So you've got your permanent magnet here, and then as a result, because these magnetic materials are inside the magnetic field of the permanent magnet, they will become an induced magnet. So the paper clips become a magnet when they're touching the permanent magnet. This is actually shown in this example because paper clips are picking up other paper clips, so they must have a magnetic force acting from them. Now the magnet, the force between the permanent magnet and the paper clips is always attractive. So this means that they'll always stick together. Together. Now, it's also important to note that when the paper clip is removed from that permanent magnet, when it's taken out of its magnetic field, it is no longer a magnet, it has lost its magnetism. So it's important to note, as we said before, that for an induced magnet, when it's removed from a magnetic field, that induced magnet will lose most or all of its magnetism. Now, if this happens quickly, we call it a soft magnet, and if this takes a long time to occur, okay, we call it a hard magnet. Now, magnetism is actually caused by the arrangement of charged particles in atoms, in this case electrons, and how they're arranged, which we call domains. So inside a magnetic material, the domains are randomly moving around, as shown on this diagram. Now if an object doesn't have any domains at all, it's a non-magnetic material. Now if all of the electrons, or domains, are aligned and face in the same direction, this makes the material polar, causing it to act like a magnet, which just means it has a north pole and a south pole. So when all the domains are moving in the same direction, that makes a magnetic material become a magnet. Now the process of induced magnetism is therefore aligning all of these domains to face the same direction. So for an electromagnet, for example, this is carried out by placing an electrical current through the material. For an induced magnet, this is carried out by placing the material in the magnetic field of another magnet. Now again, this will only work with the magnetic material because only magnetic materials have domains. Now it's important to note that we can do this in induced magnetism by either placing it near another permanent magnet or stroking that magnetic material with the magnet. So we can show it in this particular diagram. The magnetic, fi the magnetic field lines uh, means that the domains face in the same direction so it turns a magnetic material into a magnet. That's actually why magnets shouldn't be placed next to credit cards. That's because the magnets cause the domains in credit card strips to align and become magnetic, which can then break the credit card. Now, when placed outside of the magnetic field or without the electrical current running through it, the domains lose their aligned direction. They move in all random orientations. So therefore, that, mag that magnet has lost its magnetism. So like we said before, objects which misalign their domains really quickly are called soft magnets. 
uh, whilst objects which take a long time to misalign their domains are called hard magnets. Now, like we said before, it's very important to note that induced magnetism always causes a non-contact force of attraction. So when removed from a magnetic field, an induced magnet will lose most or all of its magnetism quickly because those domains will become randomly orientated instead of all lining up in the same direction. So let's just summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. A permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field, whilst an induced magnet is a material that becomes a magnet when it's placed in an, inside another magnetic field. An induced magnetism always causes a force of attraction. When removed from the magnetic field, an induced magnet will lose most or all of its magnetism quickly. Now you should be able to describe the attraction and repulsion between unlike and like poles for permanent magnets and induced magnetism, and also in understand the difference between permanent and induced magnets. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what induced magnetism is. Understand the difference between induced magnetism and permanent magnetism and finally investigate how we get the properties of induced magnetism. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson on induced magnetism, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.